Hi, this is Nephews. Welcome back to Auntie Nell's Kitchen. And to my new subscribers, I welcome you, welcome you. But I thank all of you for your love and support to my channel. Today we are going to be making another old time favorite, meatloaf. This is um, for a request for one of my special subscribers requested that I make a meatloaf. So that is on the menu for today's dinner in our household is meatloaf with a tomato based sauce. Okay, so give Auntie a moment. We're going to do the flip and a swift and we're going to get started. Okay, so I'll be right back. I think okay here is my recipe for my meatloaf okay everyone has their own special recipe this is my recipe my grandmother never made recipe not recipe didn't make meatloaf but my mom did um, but I didn't use hers either because I didn't learn how to make it all from her I just actually to be honest, I don't know how I learned to make meatloaf. I knew it was ground beef. I learned to make meatloaf in my early, early, early 20s. But, so, I messed the years one on you tweaked it. But here is my recipe, okay? Now, I have, this is, this is two, look, look this is two, about two pounds of ground, ground beef, lean ground beef. This is two pounds. I have a half of an onion and one small bell pepper. Now, the thing about my bell pepper and onion, I don't chop it. I put it in the food processor and pulse it. Okay, I pulse it. I have one cup of plain bread crumbs. I have one cup. Sounds like my blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> one cup of bread crumbs, but I will add, add a little more if needed. That's why I kept them out. You're going to need your bread crumbs will also serve as your binder. A real, your really, a really good binder would be your mustard. So I will add a tablespoon of mustard. I will add a tablespoon of steak sauce. This is the flavor steak sauce that I like a one and a tablespoon of that I will add a tablespoon of wishy shush shush I have a teaspoon of black pepper a teaspoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of seasoned salt Throw that all over in there. Now, I know some people will ask you about the Lipton Onion Soup Mix. Lipton Onion Soup Mix is, let's show you what it is. If you want to make Lipton Onion Soup Mix, this is it. You get you some onion powder some minced onions and some garlic powder and add equal parts of onion powder and garlic powder and add uh, some onions, some of these onions in it. Equal parts of each and there's your lip, uh, lip and onion soup mix. Now, I'm going to be adding two well beaten eggs I'm going to throw those in there. Put that over there for a little housekeeping. You know, I do not add ketchup to my meatloaf because my glaze will consist of ketchup. And now I'm going to get these fingers to working. And you're going to make sure you have scoop in, scoop in from the bottom. And this is how you make sure everything gets incorporated. You, you just can't do this. You, you have to bring your meat in from the bottom because you need to make sure all of that gets blended in. 
And see, the thing about putting your bell peppers and onions in your processor is you get the flavor, but you don't get chunks. Even if you can cut them up really small, you get the flavor of all the bell pepper and onions. And I just, I've always made my meatloaf and my Salisbury steak with bell peppers and onions. It gives it such a really good flavor. I don't want that big chunk. See what I mean? See, food processor missed that. I don't want it in there. Now, people think of meatloaf, they think of meat that comes out looking like a, like bread and the consistency of bread. No, that's that's not what you, you don't want your meatloaf to where it comes out looking like bread. You know, you don't I don't think you I don't think you're looking for that. So, I have my pan. You don't have to go buy out there, family, and go buy a special pan that's a meatloaf pan. A meatloaf pan is simply one of these loaf pans with the little insert where you can lift it out. You don't need to do all that. You don't have to do all that. And the thing about this meat is that it's going to make its own oil, so you don't have to uh, do all that stuff. You don't have to do all that. So I'm going to get this in here. And I'm going to get it all to the form of this loaf pan. Yeah, get it all in the corner. Get it all patted down. You don't have to go out and buy a special pan. If you don't have one of these, you can, you know, you can go to the Dollar Tree. And they, they won't be this size now. They're going to be itty bitty. Maybe you can make a couple and cook them and put them in the freezer. Remember what I say, triple wrap them in saran wrap. And then um, label them. I want to make sure it's nice and neat. I guess you all say, I'm going to keep going overboard with that uh, OCD, huh? Okay. Nice and pretty. Now, I do not bake my meatloaf with my glaze on it, okay? I don't do that. I, when my meatloaf is, is uh, nearly halfway done, I will add my glaze. Because I do like for my glaze to, I like my glaze to be all the way around my meatloaf. I just don't want it on top. I don't like that. Okay, so I am going to discard these dirty little babies. And get this on a pan. As you see, my pan is protected. And this is going to, it's my oven is already at 375. And this is going to go in the oven for an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes. And I'll be checking this with my uh, meat thermometer, okay? So I want, I need this to be uh, thoroughly th well done. See, guys, this is my little cheat sheet magnet I keep on my fridge. So I have all my temperatures. So I have my meat thermometer and uh, this is what I use, okay? Okay, family, I'm going to check my, I check one part, well, I check two parts. So I'm going to check, show you that I'm checking the temperature of my meat. Well, that's very done. <laughs> very done. 
And so I'm going to take my little thingy. Scooby, Scooby, Scooby. around here and I'm gonna let it rest it needs to rest because I can't remove it from the pan until it rests a little bit okay so what I'm gonna do now let's get started on my glaze while this is resting okay i have one cup of ketchup and i'm going to add to that one half cup of brown dark brown sugar i use dark brown sugar in my glaze some people use light i use dark and i'm going to get this all blended in and i'm going to add a little bit of worcestershire sauce about a teaspoon. A little bit of fresh ground black pepper. You can leave this out if you want to. And I want to bring this to, bring just to just to loosen it up, just to bring to a slight ball. Because I'm gonna put this on here and then it's going back into the oven. Okay? So my glaze can get a or I may use my um what do you call it? I may use my um torch. Hold on, family. See, you can tell this is really lean ground beef because hardly any oil in it. Um, so but it's not dry. Let's get that straight right now. Okay, so I just put some foil on and flipped it over. Cause I just I don't I want my glaze to be all on the sides. I don't like glazing just the top. I don't like that. I like my glaze to be all on the side. Yeah, you see how I, I'll show you. See what I mean? See my glaze. So I cause I want my glaze to be flowing on the side of my meatloaf. So you can get some goodness all over and not just the uh, top because that's what you want. You want goodness all over, right? Get some of that goodness. See, that's what you want. You want some goodness all over. my potatoes over there my Yukon gold potatoes over there they're done so I got to make some mashed potatoes he doesn't eat mashed potatoes he's gonna eat rice I did some um, Italian green beans and my your top let your top glaze be layered thick let that let put a thick coating on your top okay nieces and nephews Make sure that top glaze is really thick. And you're going to put this back in the oven. And that's where you say, you see. See what I mean? You got, see you got some of this goodness now just all the way around your meatloaf. Just not on the top. You got that goodness all the way uh-huh. 
Get a little bit of that on. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Some goodness all the way down. Miss some. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. So much better. More better, more better, more better. Okay, I'm going to put this back in. Um, oh, I got 16 minutes, so I did this last 16 minutes uh, on the timer. Um, so this gets nice, good glaze, just uh, so it can soak in and have that good, glossy look, okay? All right, guys. I brought it out. I'm just going to caramelize it. I'm shortcutting it using my torch. <laughs> Oh, got a little, little, little. Just like the Honey Bay Ham store. Yeah, I know they don't cook those hams there. Caramelizing my glaze. This is a kitchen torch. It's not something you be out you be outside with. Okay. This is a torch for the kitchen. I got pink. I like pink. This is how I do my Christmas hams. There's, I have an upload on my hams, my, how I do my honey made hams, my brown sugar hams. So, so I'm gonna let this chill out so we can slice it so you can see that goodness on the inside. All right, nieces and nephews, here it is, my meatloaf. Joni, I hope you like this. This is dedicated to Joni. Um, I hope this uh, satisfies your taste buds, and I um, hope you make this. And uh, like I said, I I can't get my words out. I I can't rumble, stumbles, and crumbles, guys. That's just what it is in my world. But here it is, uh, Auntie's meatloaf. So, I've been making it for over 30 years. <laughs> so, this is the only recipe that I know. It's my recipe. So, I'm sharing it with you guys. So, enjoy. All right. Thank you guys for uh, watching my video. And I hope you make this delicious auntie meatloaf for you and your family. This can be frozen. Okay. It can be frozen. Remember what I say? Triple wrap it. Triple wrap it. Okay, so you don't get any of those little icicles and freezer burn. Then you can't blame it on Auntie. Okay. So, guys, until the next upload, I tell you, me and this uh, uh zebra print, we don't get along. Okay. Hugs and kisses to each of you. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Be you, but be great being you. Bye. I think, yeah, I, yeah, I meant bye. Dougie can't see me, can you?